Hello and welcome to this week's ECG of the week. Take a second here to pause the video and remind yourself of this week's clinical vignette. Now let's take a look at our ECG. So we're going to use the six step method that we outlined in our ECG basics tutorial video that you can find on our YouTube page as well as our Facebook page. Uh, so the first step here is finding the rate. So we'll zoom in and we're just going to use these R peaks that we can see line up pretty nicely on the edges of these big boxes. And what we're going to do is count the number of big boxes between these peaks. So one box, two box, and we'll divide that into 300 to give us about 150 beats per minute. Um, it looks like it might be a little bit less, so between 140, 250 beats per minute. Next, what we're gonna look for is the rhythm. So what we'll do here is take these and we can move this across the rhythm strip and we see that it's about the same distance all the way across. So we can say that this is a regular rhythm. Next, we're gonna look for uh, P waves. So you might be tempted here um, to think that these are P waves, but these are actually um, part of the ST segment from the previous QRS complex. Um, and if we look over here, um, we actually don't have any P waves in front of these QRS complexes. So no P waves. Um, that also means that the PR interval, uh, there is no PR interval since there's no P wave. Uh, next, we'll take a look at the QRS segments. So we can see that these are nice, narrow QRS segments. Um, maybe one and a half small boxes. Uh, maybe two. So as you can recall, the small boxes correspond to 0 0.04 seconds uh, or 40 milliseconds. So we can say this is um, definitely less than 120 milliseconds, which would correspond to a normal QRS. Um, and finally, we'll take a look at the ST segments. So what I like to do is draw a line here across the isoelectric line. Um, we can see that after the QRS complex, uh, it does return, the J point returns to the isoelectric line and there's no ST elevation or depression here. Um, so this is a normal ST segment. So just a recap of our findings, uh, we said the rate was between 140 and 150 beats per minute. So uh, we were spot on here with the 144. The rhythm is regular. P waves are absent and um, they're actually probably just hidden. We'll come back to this later. The QRS complex is narrow, so less than 120 milliseconds. There is no PR interval and the ST segment was normal. So our interpretation of this strip is atrioventricular nodal re-entrant tachycardia or AVNRT. So just a little bit of pathophysiology around uh, AVNRT. So this requires the presence of dual pathways in the AV node. There's the alpha pathway and the beta pathway. And the alpha pathway has a slow conduction, uh, but it has a short refractory period. So a uh, slow conduction through it, but a very short refractory period. While the beta is fast conduction and has a long refractory period. This is really important to understanding what, uh, what's going on here exactly. So um, under normal circumstances, the beta pathway circles around and meets up with the alpha pathway. Um, and it also gets conducted down to the ventricles. But when it meets up with the alpha pathway, it actually cancels the impulse out. So we'll zoom in here just to, to walk through what I was just telling you. Um, so this is the slow pathway, the alpha pathway. This is the fast pathway, the beta pathway. So when the impulse comes down here, it travels slowly through this side. Let's say it gets to about here. In the same time that the fast pathway gets all the way down and travels down into the ventricles and the bundle of Hiss here. So actually, from the 
beta pathway, it will start going up this pathway and meet up with the alpha pathway. And these signals will cancel out right there. So this is what normally happens. However, during episodes of palpitations, the alpha pathway will fire again while the beta pathway is still in the refractory period. Uh, so this means that the alpha pathway can make it to the ventricles and will actually go up the other side. So we'll zoom in here to B and see what that looks like. So this alpha pathway goes down, makes it to the ventricles, and starts going up here. The alpha signal can then travel up the beta pathway, and this creates a circuit of depolarization in the AV node. So we can zoom in here to see, and we'll see that we start getting this circular loop going around. Um, and so this activates the bundle of Hiss anterogradely and the atria retrogradely. And this short cycle length is responsible for the rapid heart rate that we see with AVNRT. Um, and this is actually the most common type of reentrant circuit and is termed slow, fast AVNRT. So there are a few things that um, we see with the onset of AVNRT. So these would be premature atrial contractions as well as premature ventricular contractions um, that can precipitate this. So just some interpretation tips for um, finding this on an ECG. You'll often see a regular rhythm with uh, a tachycardic pulse. Um, so if you can remember back to our patient, he uh, was at 144 beats per minute, so this is definitely a fast heart rate. Uh, the P waves appear to be absent, but they're actually often just hidden within the corresponding QRS because the atria will beat um, during the ventricular uh, beat as well. So they could also uh, appear at the end of the QRS as a pseudo R wave or an S wave. So pseudo R waves will, will appear in V1 here. And then you may also have some pseudo S waves in 2, 3, and AVF. So this is just a treatment slide. Um, treatment for AVNRT would be um, administering adenosine, six milligrams, or a carotid massage. We'd like to stress that this is always under a doctor's orders um, and should not be attempted um, without the supervision of a medical professional. So uh, if we zoom in here, we can see a difference between our patient's ECG and this. So um, first off, we can see that the rate is much slower. So just doing a quick rate check, um, we see that there are three boxes between the R peaks, so 300 divided by three. It's about 100 beats per minute. Um, we can also see that now we have some P waves visible, um, whereas before they were most likely um, occurring at the same time as the QRS complex. So just some takeaways, um, AVNRT is a type of supraventricular tachycardia, and it's very common in young and otherwise healthy women. The regular uh, tachycardia will range from 140 beats to 280 beats per minute, and it's very rarely life-threatening, but it can be very startling. Um, people feel like their heart is beating out of their chest, uh, they'll feel flutters in their chest, um, and this can this arises from the dual pathway that we talked about in the AV node, so the alpha and the beta pathway. Um, and just some things to listen for in the history. Um, it may occur spontaneously, but it can also occur uh, upon provocation with exertion uh, or drinking tea, coffee, or alcohol. So thanks for checking in this week, guys, and make sure to keep your eyes open uh, for next week's ECG of the week. Thanks.